Thanks tonight. You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Hello. Today we have on the very uh, persistent, diligent, uh, uh, and uh, relentless Tony Viagra. How are you, Tony? I'm great. How are you, Doug? Good. Now that we get all the technical glitches uh, hopefully sorted. Great uh, to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I I, uh, I don't know if you remember Tony Viagra. Uh, we uh, we had him at the Harrisburg show. Yes. And we had a, a ton of fun just fucking with you via email. I know. I remember. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, well, he, he'd email me as Tony Viagra, and then he'd email me as his real name. And then I'd act like I was confused. Well, I already booked a guy named Tony Viagra. Sorry. <laughs> Like, wait, no, I am Tony Viagra. Uh, so he did the show, and then, then, uh, then, then he wanted to do, <laughs> and then he wanted to be on the. Uh, it, it turned into a, an affair, a one one way affair, where Tony would just <laughs> email me about any gig that was within a thousand miles of him. Can I open that gig? Can I open that gig? I'm, I'm running for president. Can I talk to you on the podcast? I said, if you can go a year without e- emailing me. I'll have you on the podcast. And he yes. did. Yes, he yes. went over a year and then said, I'm ready to travel out. I have all my vaccinations. I don't, no, it doesn't work like that. You get a Zoom call. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> Were, did you sell like vacuum cleaners door to door before you did comedy? Because you have that kind of uh, don't take no for an answer. I should have. I should have because I, I have that I have that uh, persistence in my blood. You know, when I was at when I was in graduate school, Peter and I went to graduate school, and, and you had to do a bullshit master's thesis, which was total bullshit. And uh, I, I, got, I got mine done and approved, and my advisor said to me, he said, I want to tell you one thing. He said, you're persistent. You're really persistent, and don't ever change. And uh, so I took his advice. It's a bullshit thesis. That, and, you know, most people didn't graduate because they didn't do the thesis, and I had never understood they do those fucking coursework, and you don't do the thesis. such bullshit. And my thesis was total bullshit, too. What was your thesis? My thesis or my thesis, whatever you want to, was on uh, computer crime in the public sector. Isn't that a bullshit topic to begin with? Computer? Wait, I, give us a really brief synopsis of your life because I know so crazy. I, I know that you are yeah. a disabled veteran. I am. You I drop am. that everywhere you think it's going to, you can use that card. Only with you, yes, Doug. I'm only with you. Vet. That's only with you, Doug. Only with you. I was going to ask, uh, am I the only one that you pester on a consistent basis about That's, work? Yes. Yes. Positively. You're the only one. Like if I was, yeah. if I went to the Montreal Comedy Festival and I was hanging around with Bill Burr and yeah. Dave Chappelle and all those guys yeah. and I said the name Tony Viagra, they wouldn't all just go, Oh my God, that guy fucking emails me relentlessly. No. They say who? They say who? <laughs> yeah. Who? All right. Yeah. I think they say seriously. Okay, my life, my life, my fucked up life. Uh, yeah, just give well, me a, just a, a, the quick Wikipedia page. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. I uh, I wanted to be in the military. I wanted to be in the military, in the Air Force, and I finally got in the Air Force. And uh, I love the Air Force. The Air Force was so good for me. And uh, I injured my leg in the Air Force, and the Air Force doctors gave me this medication for my leg injury that caused the duodenal ulcer that that hemorrhaged so bad. I lost so much blood. I wound up in intensive care getting transfusions. And then they said, because you have this blood uh, loss through the hemorrhage, you can no longer be in the Air Force. So we're uh, discharging you as a disabled veteran. That is not what I wanted. I had absolutely no say in it. And I was devastated uh, and came back home flat on my ass. And uh, I was a wreck. And but I immediately got up on my feet and got a job and started going to graduate school at night. And I uh, worked on my master's in business because um, I've always been obsessed with financial markets, like the stock market. I mean, I'm Love that stuff for like 60 years now. I've been interested in that stuff. The stock market, you know, old financial markets. I love it. So I went to graduate school. I think I get an MBA. That would help me. And I learned shit about financial markets in graduate school. I learned shit about it there. And uh, everything I know that I taught myself. But, I, you know, I started something. I wanted to finish this. I got my MBA. But the thing I really wanted more than anything, was I wanted to be a fucking attorney. Why? I don't know. It was in my, like in my genes or something. I, I had to become an attorney or my head was going to explode if I didn't become an attorney. When I was in the Air Force, I realized that I can become an attorney. I can't. I can do anything I want to. I learned that there. So I, I found a law school that had a night program, and I got a, I worked, and I went to law school at night. I got my JD, finished law school 10 months early, passed the bar exam the first time, 
And uh, and I'll tell you, if you think a lot of comedians are assholes, try going to law school sometime and you meet the law students. I mean, comedians have nothing on them when it comes to being an asshole. I got news for you. I mean, they're the biggest sociopathic assholes you ever fucking meet. And but I got I passed the bar exam uh, the first and I decided that I did not want to work in a private practice firm because when I was in law school, I clerked full time for this private firm. And uh, he was the most sociopathic. He was like a rainmaker. He was a rainmaker. And he was the most sociopathic asshole I've ever been around. I mean, this guy wasn't immoral. He was amoral. I mean, this guy had no fucking scruples about anything. And I thought, man, I don't want to be part of this shit. So I got a job with the government as a government attorney. And I, and I, you know, spun my wheels there for like 20 fucking years, 21 fucking years. And then I, I, I was trying to do stand-up comedy. I was trying to get, that was, was my real passion was to do stand-up comedy. That was my real passion. And where I live, where I work, it's a very, there aren't many opportunities to do stand-up. Hey, Tony, wh- when did that become your real passion? Oh, I, actually, back in, in the Air Force in the early 80s was where I made cash and, uh, be, to be a stand-up. That's where it really started. That's where it started. And I spent my wheels for years looking for a place I could open mic in the air. I couldn't find one. And, uh, and I had all this fucking stupid material in my head that I wrote, you know, stupid material that I kept going over my head. You know, I already had like half an hour of bullshit material in my head. And I so finally when, got on stage. I, I, when did you first yeah. get on stage? Oh, boy, I got on stage, oh, about, let's see, seven years ago in uh, Ocean City, Maryland. About seven years ago. All right. Yeah. Were yeah. you still an attorney at the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I still am. Yeah, I still am. Yeah. Oh, you still? Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't assume that you were uh, making a living from stand-up comedy by any means, but uh, uh, it's hard to death. You I'm also hard seem hard. to be living out of your car, so I thought I maybe you made the <laughs> jump to full time. <laughs> yeah, but you know, actually, I stopped doing. I, you know, I'm still an attorney, but I, I stopped doing that, that that work. I'm not doing that. I mean, one hundred percent of my focus is on stand-up, and you know, it's been tough. But you know, I've played the last fourteen months. It's been kind of tough. I've done like tons of Zoom shows. Zoom comedy shows. Everybody trashes them, and and I feel I like them. I do like them because I've got to network with comedians from like all over the world, and and uh, did a lot of networking, and got to I, you know I got to write a lot of new material. I worked really hard on my stand up during the pandemic. I worked really hard writing to working my bullshit at home. I worked really hard, and like when you let me open for you again, you're gonna see I'm a totally different comedian now. You can be so impressed next time you let me open. You can be so impressed. You're not gonna be like you're gonna be in shock. You're gonna be in shock. You can see that's not the Tony Bagger I remember from Irish. I, I did just Talking watch about, about six minutes of a nine minute clip you have on YouTube. I don't know how recent that was. That's old. That's very old. That's very old. It's very old. Do you, do, do you regret putting up early sets? No, no, no. I really don't. I, I have a bunch of new stuff to put up. If I ever get around to putting it up, I have tons of new stuff to put up and uh, tons, and I never get around to putting it up. Uh, but no, I don't regret. Actually, someone else put that up. I did not put that up. And, but it has like 1,200 views, which for me is pretty good. You know, that's pretty good for me, 1,200 views. You know, I guess like 200,000 is good for you. <laughs> I mean, 1,200 is good for me, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't check, but I also don't put anything up. But I yeah. know people Well, someone it. else put that up, actually. I haven't actually put anything up myself. I never put anything up myself. Other people put it up. I don't really give a fuck either. Go ahead and put it up. No, it's, tell, tell, tell us, tell us, since you, your jokes are usually pretty brief, tell us some of the ones you've written during the pandemic that you're proud of. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, if I was a psychic and I knew that an airplane was going to crash, I'd buy a round trip ticket for my ex-wife. I'm just fucking around. You can't say that. That's not right. You can't say that. I'd buy her one-way ticket. <laughs> you know, you know, I wish, my, I wish my ex-wife the best. Only the best. The best of everything. The best chemotherapy. The best artificial limbs, the best wheelchair. All right, and, you know, see. go some more, go some more. No, no, no. That, uh, maybe we'll revisit some. But I was, you don't want to burn I was, it. When I was watching the stuff that you were doing, like when you came to Harrisburg, uh, yes, that's when we had Shane Gillis. So we had like uh, yes. you know, five comics on Shane Gillis. And, 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 just Olivia Grace, his, uh, yeah, he got fired. Got fired from yeah, SNL. He, yeah, he. It was that scandal was fresh. So yeah, uh, bullshit he, scandal. But yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we wanted to get him on the bill, but I did not want to cancel you last minute after all the fun we had at your expense. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> and then Olivia Grace was on that show too. So, so what what material have you dropped since all this uh, new? Uh, oh, let's see. Because uh, I, oh, I, I was I, I was I was I was wincing a little bit watching that set on YouTube. But which part made you wince? That'll help me if you tell me what made you wince. Like about your, eating pussy? your opening joke and most of the subsequent joke. The one about eating rotten pussy, that one? Yeah, that one. 
Well, you didn't say okay. pussy. You said cunt. <laughs> see, yeah, drop the seat bomb. Okay, you can yeah, say seat bomb on your show. For a guy who like, has like okay. a lot of shock value in your uh in your punchlines, with you yeah. still use unnecessary fucks, which makes it feel like yeah, it, it loses its power. It loses its power, right? Yeah, it just sounded like you said fucking cunt a lot, which yeah <laughs> is uh well, yeah. you know when I'll you change, have the juxtaposition of this is an old man in a suit with a hat and goofy glasses and a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> you, hear kind of, you go, ah, well, I didn't expect that. From but grandfather. Then you come to expect it and it kind of loses its. Yeah. I have tons of new material since then, Doug. Tons of new bullshit. Tons. I'm totally different now. When you next time you let me open for you, you're going to be shocked. You're going to say, this isn't the same no, 20 I'll be right shocked now. if I let you open for me again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's real shock now. <laughs> What, can I ask you, why are you sitting in your car on a hot day in, in June? Well, I'll tell you why, because I'm, I'm driving back from New York, uh, visiting some friends. At first time, I've been out like 14 months, and I'm driving home, and um, I just pulled over for a, a pit stop, and I checked my email, and I saw, boom, I thought, and it was like two minutes to three, I thought, oh, geez, uh, uh, from Shaley, and I thought, oh, boy, I said, I panicked. I said, oh, I'm, you know, I just found out and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I got on. I said, hey, you better get on. What the hell? You may never get another chance to get on the podcast. I just, I mean, that's why I'm in my truck. And I, I fortunately, I have my 20 bag hat and glasses with me so I could, so I could be like, look like the asshole that you expect. <laughs> I, I, I did wonder that, uh, cause I, I didn't email you with a time until last night and I didn't see a response. So when I came out here to the fun house, I didn't know if you'd even had read the email yet. I did not. No, I didn't. I was last night was so fucked up up here. It was a really fucked up night. Tell it us about Tony. I want to know what a, yeah. a fucked up night in Tony Viagra's life is. Tony well, it was Viagra, fucked up. the gangster of comedy. Yeah, that's me. Uh, what was fucked up about it was uh, I was up visiting uh, this lady. Uh, she's a very talented comedian. And her and her daughter we were hanging out, and uh, she's a very dear friend. Uh, and uh, and I had a I had to switch to motels because I was staying at this Holiday Inn. It was a there was a shithole dump. And and ants on the floor, so I thought, fuck this. So I had to switch during the day. So I switch switch to a Hampton Inn, switch down to Hampton, like 15 miles, 20 miles away. I switched down to the Hampton Inn, which is very nice, very nice. But the ride last night, I went up to meet them for dinner at this great restaurant in uh, Mount Kisco, New York, a great restaurant. Then afterwards, I was driving down, and it was so dark, it was raining, and I couldn't see. And the GPS in my truck was fucking me all up, and I kept getting lost. I was getting so goddamn stressed. And man, until I got back to that hotel and got in, and oh man, I was wiped out. Wow. See, when you said that was a really fucked up night, I thought like there was whiskey bottles shattering. Oh, and- I wish, I wish. Uh, yeah. my, my, my idea of fucked up is, is, is pretty dull. <laughs> no shallots. I drove all the way here for dinner with my friends, and you don't have, you're out of shallots? <laughs> shallots. <laughs> what, what kind actually, of, lo- think, what kind they, of, they had shallots. I think they, what kind of law? Honest law. <laughs> He's unemployed. He's living out of his car. <laughs> are you tenacious? Was, are you as tenacious on the case as you are uh, trying to open for me or get on the podcast? Like, do you definitely. relentlessly yeah, definitely. email judges saying, hey, I was hoping we could get that case dismissed. Haven't heard back from you. <laughs> yeah, no, I was I was a very hard worker. Uh, I was actually I was uh, I was, uh, you know, you know, professional licensing, you know, doctors, nurses, CPAs, you know, professional licensing. Well, there's prosecutors for professional licensing. And that's what I was. I was a prosecutor in professional licensing where I prosecuted uh, uh, sexual predator doctors and crooked CPAs and drug addicted nurses. And I prosecuted them in what's called administrative law. And that's what I did. Nice. I, lo- I love doing trial work. I really loved it. And uh, I love trying to protect the public from asshole professionals. That, so uh, back to the uh, question I had before, what what material have you had to let go? Like what jokes have you thought, yeah, I shouldn't do that one anymore? Ah, that one where, where I said, you know, I went to Home Depot and bought her front door. I don't have a house, just a front door. Thanks for laughing at the homeless. I dropped that. I what? I dropped that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Did I, I dropped a lot of bullshit. I dropped a lot of stuff. But, I mean, but um, I, do you have, and I, actually, I don't even want you to do it, but do you have jokes that you thought, oh, that's a little too crude, that's a little too sensitive? Well, you know, I thought about, you know, this stuff about eating rotten cunt, you know, because I've killed with that in a couple of places. I mean, they went berserk. 
a couple went berserk on that. They did. In fact, I, <laughs> can I tell you a little short story about that? Can I tell yeah. you a short story? About that? Yeah, I got a. There's a there's a place uh, near Harrisburg called the Comedy Zone. I'm sure you've heard of Comedy Zones. Oh, sure. And and they're a big uh, they're a big local attraction. It's a guy named Raymond, this Amish comedian. This guy dresses up like Amish and he says fuck a lot. And uh, the owner of this place uh, actually thinks I'm funny, and, and believe it or not, and he told me that he wants me to open for Raymond. So okay, this uh, the old Greek guy that owns the place. I want you to open for Raymond. I said okay. So he said, you come here, you sit here, don't talk to anyone about me, and blah, blah, blah. So I go there that night, told it for Raven, uh, took my former girlfriend. I have a lot of former girlfriends, I wanted. And, uh, and uh, you know, he said, sit back here. Then I guess the manager of the comedy club was like incensed that the owner went over his head and booked me. Uh, uh, so anyways, so then, okay, long well, story short. It's kind of like two gimmick acts. That's like putting Carrot Top yeah. on in front of Gallagher. I know. <laughs> So anyways, so then uh, the guy that's going to be the 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 uh, host that night, I won't name any names, uh, and I won't say anything derogatory about him. But he comes over to me and he says, uh, he says you're going to get get this two minutes, you get two fucking minutes, two fucking. He said, get yeah, two fucking minutes, yeah. And he said, how do you want me to introduce you? I said, well, you know, Tony Bragger, the gangster comedy. Now, well, you know, okay, cool. He said, sit over by the stage. He said, I'm going to do my ten minutes, then I'm going to put you on. Okay. I go sit by the stage. So what's this guy doing? He said we're talking about his dog's a vulva. His dog's fucking vulva. His, and that's funnier than, that's as funny as fucking, that's as funny as colon cancer. His dog's vulva. What are you talking about? His dog's uh, vulva. Right. I, yeah, I, I happen to be a dog lover. I'm a dog lover, by the way. I don't appreciate any material about dogs, okay? People, yes. Not dogs. Anyways, Tony, Do- okay, now. Tony Viagra said, draws the line at dog vulva material. Yes, I do. I, I do have my boundaries. I want you to know I do have my boundaries. And then he, he says, anyway, he, he says, here's some local guy, Tony Viagra. I thought, thanks a fucking lump asshole. Here's some local guy, Tony Viagra. So I go on and says, the place is back is, you know, this guy's their big draw, you know, the place is back. It's a little place, you know. And, and then, uh, you know, I go, I said, welcome to, you know, comedy. I said, or we present family, family comedy, similar for the entire family. And has anybody here ever eaten rotten cunt? And the place went berserk. Place went crazy, I and mean, the whole place blew up. I and mean, they were fucking howling, you know. And then when I did some more shit, and then I was, you know, I walked off the stage, I was walking down, and everybody reached out to shake my hand. It was surreal. It was surreal. And then, uh, so I hung out in the back uh, with my ex girlfriend, and uh, and then Raymond comes on. He says, "He says, why are these some old guys standing up here saying cut?" I thought he was just making, you know, making a funny. Turns out he was pissed off that I stole his thunder, and then he complained, you know. I, I, I stole Raymond's thunder. And so the next guy, or the next day, excuse me, the next day, the manager goes on the internet on one of these bullshit sites on the internet and trashes me to shit, trashes me to shit for saying the C word before the main event. And you never say the C word before the, before the headliner. You never say, I never do that. I learned something new. You can never say it. So I violated, or I said the C word before you came on. So I violated that rule more than one time. And, and it trashed me to shit. So I called up that website. I said, Hey man, this is bullshit. It has nothing to do with your site. Bob, they took they took his review down. And I, and I called up. I said, you tell that fat motherfucker. I'm going to turn him to suit his fucking ass, okay? And he did tell him. I guess he showed his pants. But anyways, that's in the next story. That's this short story on that one. How many times have you been fired? A couple times. A few times. A few. Not too many. I can think of maybe, hmm, actually fired, yeah, maybe three times. I mean, to me, it's always a, like a badge of honor. You know, the red badge of courage, you know, for me. It's always like a badge of honor. I got medal on my shirt. I got medals on my shirt. Give us an example of a, a, like a time and place and reason that you Here. get. Oh, well, I was doing the, this. Somebody reached out to me to come do stuff at this as a private social club in Harrisburg. And they're going to try something to do. They wouldn't have a band. They wouldn't have a comedian. And I said, okay. Uh, you know, I said, check me out on YouTube. You know, I said, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So I go to the club and, uh, you know, they introduce me and I go up to the stage and I start doing my material. You know, and and uh, and like a couple minutes in my set, some old some old fart walks right on on the stage. Some old fart comes right and he whispers in my ear. Right, he whispers, hey, you got to tone it down. I saw I punched in his fucking mouth. Okay, so I, I tried toning it down. I did. He comes back over to me. He said, "That's enough. That's enough. That's it. That's it. That's enough." Yeah, fuck you. So I walked over to the lady that hired me. I said, "What's his fucking problem?" And uh, so 
you know, I felt like I was doing stand up, you know, in front of, you know, in front of bowling pins. That's what it seemed like. Uh, pins in a bowling alley. That's what it felt like. And, uh, you know, but the thing is, like, when I'm in front of my crowd, it's heaven. Like, your crowd was my crowd because they were, they were going nuts. And afterwards, like, a bunch of people came up to me telling me how much. One guy came up to me and said, after your show, he came up to me and said, he said, I always hate the opening act, but I sure like you. I said, thank you so much. And so your crowd was my crowd, actually. It really was. And another time, oh, the most famous time was when I got this gig doing stand-up, uh, some guy reached out to me on the internet and said, hey, do you want to do stand-up at my wife's surprise birthday party at this restaurant? I said, well, sure. And uh, it was, since it was a local restaurant, I gave him a low price. And I said, but, you know, uh, check me out. You know, I even sent, a, I sent a, an old video. I said, this is who I am. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's all adults. That's cool. It's all adults. Okay, so we read, read on the price. I went to the restaurant on a day of surprise birthday party for his wife. And I walked in and I walked in the back of the restaurant to talk to the husband. The husband was sitting there. The husband was a she who looked like a he. Why well, don't give a fuck? Okay. And the first thing the husband, you know, the, the black corner of glasses and the pompadour hair cut all that shit. And the first thing the husband says to me, no gay jokes. And I said, I don't do gay jokes. Okay. Then the husband said, I'm going to introduce you as my friend Steve from work. I said, okay, I'm your friend Steve from work. You must work in a fucking mental hospital. Okay. And then these fed ugly lesbian couples come marching in. And here's my friend Steve from work. Howdy, everybody. Howdy. And oh, then, wait. Okay, hang on. This is the story that you said. Yes. This is the lesbian birthday party. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. This is the story. All right. It's all fact. It's all fact. No fiction. And then, and then after all these fat, ugly lesbian couples, I never realized there were that many fat, ugly lesbian couples in this area. Apparently there are. I mean, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter to me. It's their, so, their private life, you know. I don't give a fuck about their private life. And and uh, so, and then the birthday girl walks in with this big banners, like like in the beauty pageant where this big banners is like birthday girl. Some she said birthday heifer is what it should have said. That's what she looked like. This big fat fucking heifer. And then and then the husband says, and here here's Tony Wagner, the gangster counties. And they're all sitting around, you know, like like sitting around in sort of like a romper room. Remember romper room? Yes, I do. You know, yeah. Okay, we're in the same generation. Good. And and uh, so I started doing my turn. They're laughing, laughing. About ten minutes in my set, somebody caps me on the shoulder. Oh, here's the surprise birthday girl. And I said, two over the edge. And she said, I'm over the edge. And then her, the husband pointed at me, coming right at me. He said, you leave now. And I said, can I have another beer? And he said, yeah. Or she said, yeah. So I grabbed another bottle of beer, and I left. And, you know, and uh, I got paid. Uh, I didn't get that uh, dinner I was supposed to get, but I got I got my bottle of beer and I left. And but then the next day, the the asshole fucking husband goes online and trashes me to shit for doing exactly what I told him I was gonna do. But the husband wanted to stay face with the with his wife, his her wife or whatever the fuck pronoun he used with the wife because she was pissed off. So trying to stay face with the wife, trashed me to shit for doing exactly what I told him I was gonna do. And that's a real asshole cocksucker move. On my part, but I, I've, I, I've seen that a lot, Tony. And I, I, I'll be honest, your style of humor is probably not my you know, go to, but it's you're still right. I, I remember that happened to Sean Rouse. He drove all the way uh, from L.A. to uh, Indiana to do a show Ooh. and they fired him after the first night for doing exactly what he does. Ooh. It was on his CD. A, so they had actually heard move. the joke. Yeah. Yeah. That's a real cocksucker move. It really is. Yeah, no, it's happened to me. It's uh, like, you, you yeah. know what you're booking. As yeah, long as you still yeah. get paid. I mean, I've been fired at the beginning of a week and, uh, and I got paid. Then, then I'm, I don't have to work the rest of the week, but I get the money. So yeah, it didn't yeah, bother it gives you new material. Much. It can give you new material too. That's the other benefit. Yeah. Do it's you like have that. any material from your real life or is it all just jokes? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I do. Uh, my film marriage. I do some material about my film marriage, which I should have done at your show, actually, because you probably would have liked it. Uh, I have a lot of material about my film marriage. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a potpourri of new material. You know, I was told people that if I, I want new material, I'm going to go out and get married and go through another divorce thing, so write new material. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it. And yeah, my, uh, my, yeah, I, you know, I'm, you know, I married Hitler's daughter. You know, it wasn't fun. And, uh, yeah, you know, and, you know, you know, you, you uh, know, I had a near death experience. What? Was, was, your, was, what, what, was your marriage and your comedy career, did they overlap at all? Uh, yeah. Did your wife ever have to sit through your show? No, no. Oh, she had no fucking sense of humor at all. Zero. I mean, Nazis don't have a sense of humor. They really don't. <laughs> Fascists do not have a sense of humor. I learned that firsthand. 
They just don't. They're just the most sociopathic fucking asshole on the planet. They really are. And like I said, explains why her her brother and her father are neo Nazi fucking asshole for real. Really. Now, I know what, now you just you just turned sixty seven in March. Yes. Yes. Uh uh, uh, so in seven years of comedy, I assume you've been single the whole time. Uh, yes. A- have you ever met any ladies after the show? Well, uh, I mean, I've had a couple girlfriends since the divorce. You know, I've had several girlfriends. Uh, did, uh, did you meet any of them through st- stand-up comedy? No. No, I mean, I, did I met... Did you lose uh, any of them after they saw your stand-up comedy? Uh, it's funny you should say that. No, I didn't actually... Uh, my uh, last ex girlfriend actually likes my stand up, believe it or not. Can you imagine there's a woman out there who actually likes my stand up? Can you believe it? But you know, it's online dating bullshit, you know, like, uh, like, oh, match.com, you know, such, such vile bullshit. And you, you meet these fucking train wrecks. You spend all this money to meet these fucking train wrecks. You know, there must be a way to meet train wrecks for free. I figure, you know, I had to go to a mental hospital, sit outside a ladies' room, and I'll bet you I can meet train wrecks for free without pissing all that money away. But match.com, you know, I met, I met some old skank on there and uh, under my real name, of course. Yeah, I was going to ask if you have any of those dating apps where you're Tony Viagra rather than your no, real name. No, <laughs> no, I'm uh, done you with should, dating apps. You should get one, at least one I, dating app that is just, no. just like explore your entire Tony Viagra character <laughs> and make up a past <laughs> for him, make up what he does. <laughs> And see if you see if real you can get uh, more fucking swipes than your character. <laughs> well, uh, so I met this whole a skank on uh, I guess it was Match dot com, and we started communicating. And then uh, I guess you know how you know all these apps are like interwoven; they steal all your privacy and all this other shit. And so on Facebook, she got her. You know, we're communicating, and she gets this friend recommendation on Facebook for twenty five. <laughs> I, I didn't catch the end of that. Was the last she got, part of- she got a we're communicating, you know, we're emailing and all this other bullshit, and she got a friend recommendation on Facebook for Tony Viagra. Her recommended oh. friend. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> and then she says to me, "Is that you?" I see. I told this old bitch that I am a stand-up comedian, but that's where I stop. I said, "I'm a stand-up comedian, stand-up comedy, blah blah blah." And that's it. And she said, "Are you Tony Viagra?" I see. It. That's me. I told you I do stand-up. Yeah. And then that ended it, a boom. <laughs> that was over? Yeah, like a safe phone on my fucking head or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> I thought, well, good. Because I don't know that still in the fucker. I don't want to be wasting my time with some old guy who can't, appre- who can't appreciate my art. <laughs> I'm an artist. I'm a did, performer. Did you mention that you're a disabled vet as a final last Hail Mary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think I did. You know, I usually don't mention that too much. I, I only tell you that. That's like, I have to use that crutch. You it's tell like, me you that know. in every email. I, I went back, I went through and I counted. It was like over <laughs> 70 email exchanges with me. And that's with a year off of Tony Viagra. Yeah, 14 over 70. Off. But that was mostly us <laughs> fucking with him. <laughs> we'd CC him into emails between me and Chaley and Hennigan and say, well, I'm very concerned that he's called the gangster of comedy. We're going to have to install metal detectors and extra arm security. We would have to pay for the extra security, which yeah. made it like cost prohibitive. <laughs> and, and Tony's reply, oh, you can just call me Tony Viagra. You don't have to say gangster. There won't be any problems. I promise. And I said, well, I'm afraid he calls himself over the, an over the edge comedian. You think you could dial it back to just simply pushing the envelope comedian or. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a fucking drink here, too. <laughs> so at some point we go, all right, we fucked with him enough. We let we have to let him do time. And yeah, then awesome. then I bet you you couldn't spend a year without emailing me. And if you could, I'd put you on the podcast. And here I am fucking. Yeah. Yep, paying my debts. I did. I yeah. did email him back. He said it's been over a year. I've got all my yeah. shots and ready to come. And then I ignored him. And then, of course, he sends it three more times over the next month. Uh, and then I said, yep. uh, "Is we we're going a, a, for a different demographic with our podcast?" Yeah. And he writes back, "Doug, that seems somewhat disingenuous." And I wrote back, "Yeah, in hindsight, you're right." <laughs> 
<laughs> well, hey, Tony, I got to tell you, last night, uh, Doug called me at about midnight and uh, suggested doing this at midnight last night and giving you <laughs> That window yeah, about five minutes, five minutes before he fell asleep. <laughs> and I go, isn't that also disingenuous? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's borderline malicious. <laughs> <laughs> Better help. Help me now. You know, mental illness is uh, insidious in the forms it can take on. Maybe you're hyper aware of your mortality and think you're a lot funnier than maybe the crowd. Maybe you dress up in goofy clothes <laughs> and bark swear words as though you have some kind of Tourette's that you wrote in a notebook. Either way, no matter how bad your day is, BetterHelp.com can make it better. They can make you a better person. BetterHelp.com is affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere. Connect in a safe and private online environment, and it's so convenient. Do it at your own time and at your own pace. Communicate with your therapist as often as you want and wherever you feel it's needed. Help is available at your time and your place. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you're allowed to connect with them in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Counseling doesn't have to be expensive and BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Pay a low flat fee for unlimited counseling with your counselor. Send a message to your counselor anytime and switch counselors at any point if you don't feel like you're getting enough benefit. Find the particular expertise you need online. Don't limit yourself to counselors located near you. I want you to start living a happier life today, even if you're just traumatized as an audience member and not the act. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash stanhope. Join over 1 million people, including me and Tony Viagra, who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, help, get me out of this show. BetterHelp.com slash Stanhope. Thank you, BetterHelp. I'll be calling shortly. I you you do you still come out to uh, the N word riddled uh, gangster rap that you were playing? Oh yeah, yeah. That's my intro music. Yeah. What's it? Feels good to be. It's a by the Ghetto Boys. Ghetto Boys. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. But there is there is a, a clean version of that song that. Is available, you know. They don't have to use the. Uh, oh, I'm not. I, 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 no, I only brought, bring this up because I thought that was, you know, part of your gimmick to walk out in your fucking suit and bow tie yeah, and hat and is. glasses. But it I, is. when we when we started this Zoom before we figured out the technical difficulties, it sounds like you were listening to rap music in the car. Yeah, Did you really uh, listen to rap music. I listen to a lot of hip hop. Yeah, I love. I love every type of music. I do, but uh, I. I do love uh, hip hop. Yes, I do. It's one type that I love. Yeah, one of my friends, actually, one of my friends, she was uh, friends with DMX. All right, I don't know. Like Rest there were there were references in your act that I didn't get. And if you think you feel stupid on any given day, when Tony Viagra is dropping <laughs> fucking Cardi B references, and you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, well, how do, I don't. Oh yeah, it's Cardi B. Yeah, I love Cardi B. Oh yeah, I love her. Bodak Yellow. That, that's my favorite song. Yeah, I love her. I know none of that shit. Yeah, I love every I, type of music. I love every type of music. I, you know, I live listen to every type of music, uh, whatever mood I'm in. But I really enjoy all music. I'm not. I don't limit myself. I'm not a music snob. You know, I listen to everything. I love. I love classic country. I love classic country. I love classical. You're like a real life Neil Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. We're, we're getting close to wrapping up. I. I, I did want to. Uh, ask you about that whole running for president thing yeah yeah well i ran for president in 20 as the dada party candidate you know dadaism that french school philosophy based i, I, on I only know it because it's a frequent oh, crossword yes. puzzle answer <laughs> dada <laughs> uh you know dadaism you know it's the french school of philosophy to find the answer through nonsense and bullshit you know and so it's my school of philosophy did, did you dadaism. actually register to run no Actually, it started out, I uh, do this, I was 
on this uh, Facebook video show from some comedy club uh, called The Couch. They had a show on called The Couch of Satire, and they asked me to be on because because my character is so fucking ridiculous. And uh, but I, I come up with ideas, you know, to make it interesting. One of my ideas, I said, I'm going to announce I'm running for president. And, uh, you know, because it's, you know, there's nothing more ridiculous than politics. And I came and you know, I discussed my platform and all this other bullshit. And then uh, I uh, I had the bumper stickers manufactured. Which I think I gave you a bumper, Tony Vega bumper sticker when you're in Harrisburg. I think I recall giving you one. I gave it to Shaley to give to you, I think. And yeah. uh, I, was still, I hope it's on your car yet. <laughs> And then, so then, I, uh, and then to make it more absurd, it, 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 it did go immediately onto the car because it was a rental. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you peeled it off when you got on your airplane to go. <laughs> and then, and then, I'd make it more absurd. Uh, then I came on another show and I introduced my running mate. Uh, I do several characters. I mean, Tony's my main character, but another character I do is Rusty Floorboard, uh, the comedy cowboy. So I, I just said my running mate, Rusty Floorboard, and uh, I went out, quick ran out and dressed, changed into Rusty Floorboard, came back and discussed uh, why I'm running with Tony Viagra and all this other bullshit. And, uh, and uh, I do, uh, I'll send you some, I did a character of a uh, comedian, Bob Hopeless, entertaining the troops over in Pyongyang, North Korea. I'm going to send you that video, see if you like it. And also did a video of, uh, of Frank Purdue for Purdue Pharma and Percocet. That, I got good feedback on that. On that video, I'm going to send them both to you uh, when I get home, and so so it'll give you. I have a feeling I'm going to get sent a lot of things from the Viagra camp over the next. <laughs> uh, not really. Not if you don't want them, I won't send them. But if you want to see yeah, them, yeah, yes, you, sure, just yes, yes. I'll send them. There's two videos I'll send you. I'll send you two videos. Uh, right. uh, comedian Bob Hopeless and Frank Purdue for Purdue Pharma Percocet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? That, that, do that because I've been uh, toying with the uh, edibles a lot more lately, and uh, yeah, I could see being really high and watching Tony Viagra. Yeah, and I have a bunch of other like I did a I have a bunch of new Tony Viagra videos I can send you. I got a because I was on this uh, internet TV show. Let's, let's start with the two. Okay, I'll start with two, and I'll stop it after two. If you want more, just say Tony more. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I reach out, is that's when you <laughs> send the videos. <laughs> Let me make the first move <laughs> in the next millennium, right? And <laughs> yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you those two. You know what? I I I I love that you enjoy yourself so much. I envy the fact that you, in your golden years, are still enjoying yourself so much doing stand-up comedy. We'll call it. Stand-up is my passion. It's my passion. I love it. It keeps me young. It keeps me young. That and doing my yoga every day and going to the gym every day. All the three keep me young. Wow. I'm a yoga freak. What, what did you, what, how exactly did you hurt your leg in the air force? Uh, uh, marching, marching and running extensive, extensive marching and running extensive marching and running. Yeah. I think every time someone drops the disabled veteran card, they should you know give you a well, disclaimer of exactly how you were disabled. Like, well, I don't agree with that. I slipped I on a banana that. peel chasing a hooker at Mardi Gras. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that. I mean, there's many ways, you know, it wasn't my decision. I want to remain in the Air Force. Uh, you know, I had to get transfusions uh, before they were testing blood for AIDS and all that. I'm not shit. saying you had a good time or you, it wasn't yeah. warranted, but when yeah. you say disabled vet, you immediately think Tom Cruise and born on the 4th of July, <laughs> guy with no legs coming back and fucking IED over in fucking Turdekistan yeah. or something. Hurt well, I'm sorry time. to disappoint you, Doug. I'm very sorry to disappoint you on that. <laughs> They both my legs. I'm sorry oh. for I both my legs. You know? Oh no, I you, you didn't disappoint. That's exactly what I was thinking. Is <laughs> like we had that disabled vet that lived up the street that was haunting me forever about helping a disabled veteran move. And uh we rallied a bunch of troops. It's a, it turned out great. That's how we met Chad Shank, is yeah. he's one of the people that volunteered to help this guy move. And his disability great. was some hearing loss. He was in like perfect shape, he was like 33 <laughs> years old. And he had a bit yeah. of hearing loss from the fucking being on the uh, you know, bombing grounds or whatever. Yeah. Everyone yeah, else, everyone else that showed up to help him was more disabled than him. You know, it happens, you know, it's, you know, and anybody that, you know, takes that step forward and, and takes that oath to die for their country is in a special status and things happen and, and no control over, you know, and, um, Abe Lincoln was the one that decided that, uh, 
uh, disabled veterans, veterans who get injured in the military should be compensated. Abe Lincoln started that. And, uh, and actually, uh, veterans have a very long history getting fucked over, especially disabled veterans have a very long history getting fucked over by the government, which is, I'm sure it's no great revelation to you. That yeah, the they, didn't, they, didn't, they don't tell you that at the recruiter's office? <laughs> no, they don't. They, that, that should be a required disclaimer. No, they don't. They tell you how fantastic it is. Yeah. That, 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 that misnomer that I, uh, I, I, I signed up to protect your freedom. No, you signed up for free community college afterwards. <laughs> I signed up to get out of that rat hole fucking shit old town I was in. That's why I said, get the fuck out of this fucked up state. Get you a were, new we life. We were at risk of speaking Urdu if it weren't for our frontline fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, so are you going to run again in 2024? Oh, definitely. Oh, positively. I'm going to get I'm going to get new bumper stickers made shortly and uh, in fact, I'm going to send you one when I get them. I, yeah, you know two. what I do, Tony, since no one's going to notice anyway, you should run for president in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> every year. Run every year. Every year <laughs> except for election years. <laughs> <laughs> 22, 23, 25. <laughs> Don't gum up the works. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah. I, I, I was going to run in 2024, but at my age, let's go <laughs> so, 2022. You know, let's get a jump on it. Yeah, you know, you know, and of course, you know, talking about COVID-19, I'm sure you've heard of COVID-19. It's a great headline. I'm sure you've heard of COVID-19. You know, I'm trying to get COVID-19. You know, I really am. I'm trying to get COVID-19. I really am. Because at my age, I'll take anything. It's 19. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yep. That, like that's that classic Tony Viagra. Yeah. God, there was one I laughed at too. He keeps there. writing. I can't that's remember great. what it was. Uh, so, tell me that one. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> the one you laughed at. I got to know that. Forget what it was. Sorry. Hey, you know, you no know, people are worried there's going to be an insurrection, and I'm worried that I'm going to have an erection. And you know, I'm at you know, the point in my life. Go ahead. You, my, you give me the fucking setup, and I can guess the punch. I, you said insurrection. I know it's an erection joke. Like. <laughs> give me give me a setup and I'll tell you what the punchline is gonna be. Yeah, I'm at the point in my life where the only thing that gets hard are my arteries. All right. You didn't give me a chance to guess the punchline. That's what I'm saying. You give me a Tony Viagra setup and I'll probably be able to guess the punchline. Yeah. You know, it's important you know, I had a near death experience. A near death my experience? Marriage. My marriage. Yeah, so you're not letting me guess the punchline. You have to stop okay. before the punchline. You do Okay, the okay, here's another one. Here's another one. You know, I lost 200 pounds of cellulite. You got a divorce. Right. You got it. We got a winner. We got a winner. Give him, give him that suitcase, that Samsonite suitcase. <laughs> the one that's loaded with weed. And then, and, uh, you know, I was looking for my soulmate. Uh, go ahead. I, I, I went with a soulmate. Oh, you got a cellmate instead of a soulmate. Yeah. All right. I wanted a woman who was stable. Did you hear Tracy's guessing no. that uh, not a woman in a stable? Close, but not exact. She belongs in a stable. <laughs> I get right. It's a fun game. Yes, it is. <laughs> Guess. You know, I had a, you know, I had a trophy bride, and I wish she's on the wall. Yes, the face did sell that one. I, 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 Next to the trophy moose. I thought I, I thought you were going to go with uh, third place trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Booby prize oh, trophy. Yeah. Actually, I, I that, wait. That's one of my jokes. It's about really? uh, Jake LaMotta and his, he had a trophy wife, but she's still sixty, so it's more like a bowling trophy. <laughs> <laughs> what a great movie, too! Great fucking movie, The Raging Bull. Great yes. movie. Okay. Jake oh, LaMotta did stand up. He did stand up, Jake LaMotta. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and he he didn't remember that he was doing it while he was doing it towards the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a great story. It's a true story. And who, who, I know somebody that, uh, like, their, their aunt or their uncle lived, like, next door to Jake Lamada's house in New York when, when Jake was older, lived right next to him. You say what a nice guy he was? He was probably, like, punch drunk, but he's a nice guy. Oh, yeah. No, he was completely out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. he used to play poker in this very room that we're in. And, uh, wow. Yeah, his, he, well, yeah, he was our neighbor. He had a house in Bisbee. And, uh, yeah. They'd bring him over, and a lot of times they'd have to look at his cards and go, "Champ, yeah. you can't even beat what's on the board. Stop betting." <laughs> he had no yeah, idea what he's yeah. doing. Well, oh, speaking of boxers, you know, I uh, uh, I interviewed Muhammad Ali uh, 
back in the fall of uh, 1972 before his Bob Foster fight. I was about to interject when you said be, in the fall of I was going to say Saigon. And I was actually <laughs> that's actually before the fall of Saigon. It's 1972. It is. That was 75. Did, yeah. Did you interview him at the draft board? No, I interviewed him at his training camp in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania. Uh, when yeah. you say interview, did you meet Pester? Him? I, hey, no, can, I, uh, can I spar with you? No, <laughs> no uh, that's a good idea. No, I, I was. Uh, in college at the time and uh, I was working at the college radio station and I had a this brainstorm to go up there with my my cassette recorder and walk in and say, I'm from this bullshit radio station, can I interview Muhammad Ali? And I didn't he said, Yeah, sure, sit there, we'll wait there and we'll call you in. So I waited a long time and he opened the door and said, Come on in and went in there's, there's Ali sitting on the sofa and uh, I was eighteen years old and I was kinda of a little intimidated at the time, but I did the interview and it was fun and I also got to interview Drew Boudini Brown, remember him? Ali's uh, uh, motivator and sight man and all those other. Remember the Boudini Brown? He's in the movie no. Staff. No. Yeah. They got to interview Boudini Brown. Yeah. Do you, still, day. And do you still have like a copy of that interview? Yes, I do. I have a cassette tape at home. I'm, I'm trying. I know it's at home somewhere. I have to find, it, but I do have the cassette tape. In that yeah, you got to get that shit digitized. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I agree. 1972, let's see, that was like 40, almost 50 years ago, like 49 years ago. Shit. Yeah, yeah, when's the last time you played that tape? <laughs> uh, it's been probably 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah I would get that Don't to a professional. Try. Don't try to put yeah. it in your, I bet you still have a cassette player. Uh, don't try to play uh, it. Get it to a professional I so will. it doesn't get eaten I will. by your fucking 8-track player. I know. Yeah, I know. I had an 8-track player. I actually did have an 8-track player uh, when I was in high school. It was The sound was great on my 8-track. I had Used to listen to the Hendrix Electric Ladyland eight track all the time, and the sound was fantastic. It was really good, was great. And I love, I love that album. It's a double album, Electric Ladyland. Great album. It, it was a great I, album. Listen, we could go uh, all day. I, 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 and I'm absolutely certain of that. We could do a Jerry Lewis telethon. We could go to <laughs> breakfast. Yeah, we could get Tony we'll started on a. We could get we'll Tony started on any topic. We'll be in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna be in a wheelchair? <laughs> hey, remember when National Lampoon had that full page picture of Jerry Lewis in a wheelchair? Remember that? Uh, I, when we used to read National Lampoon? I remember Jerry National Lampoon? Lampoon. I don't remember that, but National Am Lampoon was definitely a, a huge early influence to me. Oh, me too. Me too. Remember the National Lampoon Radio Hour? Remember that show? No, I, I knew it existed, but I didn't listen to it. Oh, it was we fantastic. barely get Dr. Demento on our transistor. I remember him. I remember him. But the, the funny part about the National, the National Lampoon Radio Hour, it was, to, you know, it was the radio hour, but it was only half an hour. Half, so <laughs> they go off at half an hour. Everybody called the radio station. Fucking raise the hell complain and the radio station come on and say, oh, these guys are full of it. This is only half an hour. Stop calling. I do that all the time. <laughs> And those National Lampoon albums, did you listen to any of those National Lampoon albums? They were great. No, no, just the magazine. The letters from the editor. Yeah. How about that Bernie, my meter's running? Remember this column? Bernie, yeah. my meter's running? No, I, you remember a lot more than I do. Yeah, I remember like an elephant. I have a face like one, too. And and But he used to talk about Bernie the taxi. Like, he'd talk about when he would fuck Jackie Onass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, True genius. Sure, comic genius. And there was one letter to the editor that said, uh, <laughs> Dear editor, uh, uh, in whatever 1980 or uh, 70, whatever, James Huberty went into a McDonald's and killed 17 people with an automatic rifle. What I want to know is that number subtracted from the total <laughs> of billions served. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that reminds me of some material I do about uh, about we live in a racist society. That's some new material you haven't heard yet, <laughs> that we live in a racist society, and I got the evidence to prove it. <laughs> I don't care. You want to hear it? You want to oh, hear it? Oh, oh, I thought that was the punchline. You know the punchline? That's not it. No, that's the opener. It's the, it's more of a story, uh, more of a story type. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. I got the evidence to prove it. My first premise is... Uh, <laughs> Each year, blacks spend millions of dollars at McDonald's. That's Exhibit A. Exhibit B is, in, re or in return, McDonald's gives them high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, 
and a white clown, Ronald McDonald. Yeah, Ronald McDonald. He stands for truth, justice, and the American way. And he's the king of philanthropy. You know, the Ronald McDonald House for the sick kids. There's not a more noble cause than that. So, that leaves a question. Will there ever be a black Ronald McDonald? Well, who the fuck knows? But maybe, just maybe, if the economy tanks and McDonald's profit tanks, the corporate board might panic and decide that a black Ronald McDonald will jumpstart sales. So does that mean there'll be a black Ronald McDonald? Fuck no. You know, and I know, that you know, that I know, he'll be Ronaldo McMack. Ronaldo McMack. And how does that go over? Ah, it, it's, it's gone over very well at times, and other times, uh, I thought it was going to in an Alzheimer's unit. Uh, so it varies, you know, it depends if I'm in front of my crowd or not. You know, my crowd. My, your crowd is my crowd, Doug. That's one thing I learned. Your crowd is my crowd. I, no, Your crowd I, is, oh. I think uh, I think many people in my crowd would take umbrage to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, after after that show, how many people in the crowd came up to you complain about me? <laughs> I want to know. I no no one because that was the night the uh, Shane Gillis was there and we had to right. immediately podcast after the show. Right. So nobody. With Olivia Grace. You. Olivia Grace. I'm. Yeah, Olivia Grace, and uh, yeah, uh, and then we and had Shane. the Shane Gillis podcasts right there in right. the green room. So yeah, I didn't yeah. really meet that crowd much, but uh, if, if anyone was complaining about you, Tony, it was on the way home in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Many people came up after the show and and uh, told me how funny I was. I, I was it was surreal. I was really high from it. That's great. Yeah, it was great. I was, I was, I was like high for like three days after that. It was, it was, it was such a sort. Of, I mean, that was definitely the high point of my comedy career by far. <laughs> by far, that was the high point of my comedy career, right? <laughs> I, 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 as much as I'm irritated by it, sometimes I still admire your tenacity and the joy that you get out of doing what you do. And you know what? Fuck them if they don't like it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. if it's making you that happy. Then that makes me happy. Yeah, and but the bottom line is, when I get in front of my crowd, it's great, and I get it's such a high. When I'm in front of my. In fact, I'm going to be uh, headlining at a show Thursday night in Emmaus, Pennsylvania, at King Coffee. I'm the headliner uh, because they had the headline last year, and they like my uh, crazy shit so much. They're bringing me back. Well, Chaley, is this going out on Wednesday? Oh uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, this will be out the day before. Uh, your show. Tell uh, where again is it? It's in Amaze, Pennsylvania, which is near Allentown, at King Coffee in Amaze, Pennsylvania. They're having a show there, which is going to include some music and comedy, and I'm the headlining comedian. And I bet that's pretty, uh, pretty uh, reasonable uh, entry fee on that. It is. It's very reasonable. Yes, it is. It's a blue collar type fee. Yes, not a country club fee. A blue collar. How much is it to get into that show? Uh. I don't know. I know it's cheap. I don't have the exact, I don't recall the exact, but I remember when I looked at the poster that it was very reasonable. All right. It's very reasonable. Very reasonable. Why you come see somebody. So come see somebody who's very unreasonable. <laughs> oh, and you said it's a coffee house. So does that mean people should sneak in their own booze? Fuck yeah. And their own weed. And you know, it's because weed's not illegal in Pennsylvania. Rec- recreational weed is not legal in this should hold dumb state yet. So bring your own fucking weed too. Yeah, I think people would probably know about the weed thing, but if they hear yeah. a comedy show, they probably expect cocktails. So bring your own yeah. cocktails. Get your sneaky flask. Get your booze suit on. Tony, it was a pleasure, and I, I look forward to seeing Bob Hopeless and the uh, and rest Frank of Purdue. the board. Or... No, Frank Purdue for Purdue Foreman. Okay, Frank Purdue and Lance Boyle and all of your plethora of characters. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a whole shitload of characters. Yeah, I'm always coming up with new ones all the time. Yeah, but as, thanks, Doug. Is an all is great being on your podcast. Always great work with you, Doug, and great seeing uh, you and Shaylee and Tracy. It's always great to see you, great people. Yeah, uh, I hope you've had the air air conditioning on in that hot car because at your age, you're like a fucking basset hound waiting for its owner at a fucking piggly <laughs> wiggly sitting in a hot car at the parking lot. <laughs> This truck has has fantastic air conditioning. This truck is awesome. All right. It's good. Go fucking crank up your fucking hip hop and put the fucking pedal to the metal. And, uh, yeah. And Doug, and Doug, and and figure out when you're going to let me open for you, okay? Then you can let me know, okay? 
We're going to put a team together on that right after this podcast is over. We're going directly to this, the strategy room. We're, we're, late, we're late for our meeting. Right now. Strategic planning room. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look so at the going to Okay, Def the five. group came back. Tony Viagra, here's the results. All right, Tony. Uh, drive safely. and uh, uh, Hey, Doug, what, what number podcast will this be? What number? Podcast well, you can say it into the mic, Jaylee. Well, 451. 451. Four, yeah, 451. Like, 451. Great. Okay, I'll put the word out. Yeah, that's, that's why you burn <laughs> the books. 451. Great. I'll put the word out. Thanks, Doug. Was, I had a blast. It's always great hanging out with you folks. All always right. Great. We love Thank you, Tony. you. We love you too. Thank you so much. Bye, Tracy. Bye, Shaylee. Bye Take now. care. See you. Take us out, Bingo. Okay. Bye bye now. <laughs>